Understanding personal finance is key to being able to manage your money correctly. Hey everyone and welcome to The Savvy Squaddy. In today's video, we'll be going over personal finance and why it's so important to be financially literate. Firstly though, what is personal finance? Personal finance is the financial management of one's resources with regards to income, expenditure, savings and investments. This includes making financial goals and meeting them, whether that's owning a home, supporting charities, helping out your family, planning for retirement, saving for your children's future, and much more. As the name suggests, it's personal, so it's different for everyone. It all depends on your income, expenses, living requirements, and individual goals. Coming up with a plan to fulfill those needs within your financial constraints is key to becoming financially literate. Research shows that around 70% of people who win the lottery end up losing it all. This is because many of these people are not financially literate and have not been taught personal finance growing up, and so don't know what to do with their money, so they just spend it. Celebrities like 50 Cent, Nicolas Cage, Mike Tyson, Elton John and many more have all filed for bankruptcy at some point in their lives due to their overspending, high amounts of debt, living a lifestyle that isn't conducive to their income and a lack of personal finance. So why is personal finance important? It's important because without it, you will spend the rest of your life accumulating debt always trying to get ahead but never managing to, and sacrificing your most precious resource, your time, for money. Someone who is financially literate will live a much more fulfilling and secure life because they understand the importance of setting and achieving financial goals and financially planning for their future. People who are financially literate understand the value of their time and don't waste the money that they've earned with the time that they have sacrificed. But how can you start? To begin with, it's important to create a budget and track your expenses. This can be done very easily using pre-made spreadsheets on Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets, which is what I use. Or there are some apps out there that can do it too. Creating a budget greatly aids you to living within your means. If your lifestyle exceeds your monthly income, then that is a problem, and you will never get anywhere financially in life living that way. Do not let your monthly income define your budget. It's not a target. When you can see where all your money is going every month, it really opens your eyes to how much you are wasting. When I started tracking mine, I saved £50 in subscriptions alone that I rarely used and cut back on my eating out and takeaways as I didn't realise how much it was all coming to. It really is an eye opener. A general guide to help start you off is the 50-30-20 budgeting method. This says that 50% of your net income, that's take home pay, goes towards your needs. Your needs are what you require to survive, such as rent, food, utilities and transport. Netflix, I'm afraid, does not fall under this category. 30% goes to discretionary spending, so your wants, things you don't actually need but are nice to have, so eating out, streaming subscriptions, days out with the family, a new watch, etc. The final 20% goes towards paying down debt, saving and investing. For example, Joe lives alone and his monthly take home pay is £1500, so with the 50-30-20 budgeting rule, £750 would be set aside for rent, food, bills, etc. £450 would be set aside for discretionary spending, such as clothes, subscriptions, Starbucks, etc. And the remaining £300 would go towards debt repayment, saving and investing. For this, Joe sets aside £100 for paying off his credit card bill, £100 into his investment account, and £50 each into an emergency fund and a sink fund, which I'll come on to next. With the leftover money he has at the end of the month, he pays more towards his debt to get that paid off quicker. Creating a budget and tracking all your expenses really is a big step in the right direction and it is not difficult to do. It just takes a few minutes every night to update it and it could save you a lot more money than you think. In a future video I'll be showing you how I track my expenses and the spreadsheet I made to help me do it. Now the budget's sorted, it's time to start an emergency fund. As the name suggests, this fund is for emergencies, actual emergencies. Not buying a new sofa because your current one doesn't match the curtains. Your emergency fund should have a minimum of three to six months living expenses in it. It's there for if you lost your job or something life-changing happened. You could then still maintain your lifestyle whilst you look for a new job and so not be overly financially affected by the emergency. You would pay into this using the 20% portion of your net income set aside for debt, saving and investing. And just because you hit the six month quota doesn't mean you have to stop paying into it. The more in there, the better financially secured you are in case the worst was to happen. As well as an emergency fund, the less important sink fund is also a really handy thing to set up. You can pay into a sink fund each month to help pay for big financial expenses in the future that aren't deemed an emergency. Paying off your car insurance, council tax and much more in one payment is a great use of this as you will then save on the interest you would have paid had you done it monthly. Also, if you're planning on going away on a family holiday in six months, start saving into it now so you aren't struggling to pay for it when the time comes. 
you should not be going into your emergency fund to pay for these types of expenses. The next subject to tackle in personal finance is debt. I have a whole video that goes into a lot more detail about loans and debt, which I'll link below. Essentially, try and limit debt, but I know it's easier said than done. Debt can be useful if managed correctly, but can become a huge issue if not. Do not use your credit card for discretionary spending and never max it out. In the depth of Squaddy's video, I show the massive negative impact that not paying your credit card bill in full by the required date can have on someone's financials and how it can really send people into a spiral of debt. Use your credit card wisely. I only use mine for fuel and I pay it off straight away and that is purely to build up my credit score. Chances are, if you're paying for something with a credit card, knowing that you won't be able to pay the entire bill by the due date, then you can't actually afford that item. And if you can't afford that item, then in my opinion, you shouldn't really be buying it as you're not living within your means. And finally, the last thing to do to help with your personal finance is saving and investing. I've already touched on an emergency fund and a sink fund, but there are many other things you can do to set up for a secured financial future and a stress-free retirement. Investing is one of the big things to do and it's not hard at all. I've already made a video about investing, so I will link that below and also watch the compound interest video as that will too will give you insight into the power of compounding with regards to investing and how it can set you up for a stress-free retirement. For those of us in the military, unless you do a full career, the pension is not sufficient enough and even then, it still may not be enough depending on your personal situation when you leave. That's also the same with the state pension. It is most definitely not enough to sustain you through retirement. With people now living much longer lives, unless you want to be working into your 70s and 80s, start setting aside money now to create an extra retirement pot so you can actually enjoy the later years of your life and not have to sacrifice what little time you have left to wage labour. Personal finance is not taught in school and in many cases it isn't taught at home because parents too are not financially literate as they weren't taught in school or by their parents and so if it doesn't change the vicious cycle will continue but it can change the very fact you're watching this video means that you're interested in personal finance and increasing your financial literacy it really is not hard to do and it's never too late to start for both yourself and your children if you have any if you do then teach them young about money so when they are older they don't end up trying to chase it and falling foul to debt and bad financial decisions set them up for financial success in the future by teaching them now what you weren't taught as you were growing up with everything being so accessible nowadays and so instant, it's understandable why people are bad with money. You need a TV, Amazon Prime next day delivery. Want a takeaway? Uber Eats. Want to binge watch Breaking Bad? Netflix. Want a loan to pay for a holiday? Take 10 minutes to fill out an online form. In today's society, we are inundated with adverts and messages trying to persuade us to buy things which grant us instant gratification. And for a short period of time, it works. We are happy with our purchase. However, that warm fuzzy feeling soon disappears once novelty is worn off. Very often, short-term gratification often comes at the expense of long-term problems. If you're going into debt now to satisfy your consumerism in the short term, then you're just pushing the problem down the road for future you. And future you won't be happy when they are in a lot of debt with nothing to show for it, and the instant gratification is now gone, and they are just left with the stress and headache of paying off a loan that they didn't need in the first place. I'm not here to tell you what you should do with your money. Like I said at the start, it's personal finance. If you want to spend it all, then by all means, spend it all. But just realise you are doing no favours to your future self or family. The whole point of this video and channel is to show you what you can do with your money. It really is as simple as live within your means and do not spend more than what you earn. It is much more difficult to increase your income than it is to lower your expenses. And you shouldn't be going into debt to maintain a lifestyle you can't afford. Self-discipline is truly one of the key traits when it comes to personal finance. If you are constantly buying things for short-term gratification with no long-term goal in mind, then you have a consumption issue. People often say, if only I had more money. The problem with that is, if they can't fix their consumption problem, then more money will not solve their problem. It will just enhance it as they will buy more things. Money is not the root of all evil. It really emphasizes people's personalities. So, if you have a very consumerist personality, then more money will just emphasize that consumerism. Equally, if someone is a bit of a bed, then more money will just emphasize that bad personality. I really hope that this video has pushed you to start taking personal finance seriously. Your future self will really thank you for putting in the work now. If this video has inspired you to start taking action with regards to your personal finance, then leave your comments down below. I'd love to see them. Thank you all for watching. If you liked what you just saw, please hit the subscribe button up there. And if you want to see some more videos, click over there. See you soon.